come to lesson seven. Today we cover three objectives. The first one is the idea of death can save many lives. The second one is that you know, understand that different types of purpose. And the main point is that how to find out your own purpose in life. So I have three copies of this. Anybody who did not download? Okay. Yeah. Everybody knows Steve Jobs, right? Yeah. Uh, about two or three days ago, he resigned as the CEO. Now, way back in 2005, he gave a convocation address. Yeah, I heard that. University. That's right? very good. Yeah. yeah. So I just wanted to mention a few ideas from that talk. Okay. The first point I want to mention is that uh, you mentioned about three stories, but I just want to highlight three points. The only way to do great work is to love what you do. Okay. You, you have to do, do something you love. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking. Don't settle for anything less. Okay, you have to do what you love, and, and don't settle for anything less. And with all magic of heart, you will know when you find it. Right? It's something like how you know which one is the true love, right? Or what work you really love. So when you find it, you'll know it. Like any good relationship, it just gets better and better as years roll, roll up. So keep on looking until you find it. Don't set up for anything less. So he said, look into your own heart and follow your heart, pursue your dream, and, and don't set up for anything less. That's a pretty high standard, right? Mm -hmm. to the second point, important point I made is that when I was 17 years old, I read a quote that went something like that. If you live each day as if it was your last, someday you will almost certainly be right. So it made such a great impression on me since then that for the past 33 years, I have looked in the mirror every morning and asked myself, if today for the last day of my life, what well, I want to do, what I'm about to do. That's a simple question, right? You look in the mirror. If even for the last day of my life, do I still want to do what I'm about to do? If the answer is no, you better think about changing your job. Okay. I mean, it's some criteria as it's called mirror test, right? Now the last point is, is most relevant to, to today's uh, discussion is that remembering that I will be there soon is the most important tool I've ever learned to help me to make big decisions in life. Why? Because almost everything, all the great expectations of pride, fear of embarrassment, fear of failure, all these things will fall away in the face of death leaving only what really matters. That's why I say the idea of death saves many lives. Because if you spend your life ch chasing after expectations, external reward, recognition, so you know that one day you all fall, fall away. What will remain is that that you've done something with, with you've done something important with your life. That's why it matters. Okay. Now this is a Steve Jobs remarkable guy. He dropped out from school after six months in college, <coughs> and he knew exactly what he wanted to do with his life. You know, he went to change the world through technolo technological innovation. Remember the famous Super Bowl ad? Remember the first one? 
where after they started, he had the, the guts to have a commercial uh, during Super Bowl featuring a little David challenging the, the huge Goliath with IBM. And his, his ambition was to knock down IBM. Look what he did. And those days you laughed at him, right? He was a little kid. And now he's way bigger than IBM. So, but then he's a very gifted person. Not everybody is gifted as fortunate as Steve Jobs. Right? Now, another person is in a very different arena, uh, Jack Layton. Now, Jack Layton, the five or three days ago, I go, uh, he wrote a last letter to the Canadians. He said, all my life, I work to make things better. Hope and optimism have defined my political career. At a time, at my time in political life draws to a close, I want to share with you my belief in your power to change the country for the better. We can make Canada better, make it a country of greater equality, justice, and opportunity. Now, you might not agree with his ideology. He went to bring socialism into Canada, right? That's his ideology. But you have to admire the guy. His, uh, he has a, a, a single purpose in life, that is try to make Canada a better country. You know, in the beginning, the government was hope, NDP, world war NDP, right? So he entered uh, politics as a, uh, as a councilman in Toronto, right? And so his whole life in politics with one aim, one purpose, to make Canada a, a more equitable, more just society. Now, when I look at these two people, we know that what drives them and what motivates them in the face of obstacles and cancer and death, what motivates them is a clear sense of purpose. They know what they want to accomplish in life. Now, if you know what you want to accomplish with your life, then you're miles ahead of your colleagues. Now, most people in our society, you know, they are pretty practical. They say, well, most children, most children or young people say, I want to get a good job and make a good living. Yeah. That is as far as they would think. I want to get a good job and make a good living. Now, that is not really... The purpose of life is not making a living, right? I mean, you need to make a living. But there has to be more than making a good living and making a living. So if, if you're always thinking it's to do with making a living, and, and then you will not live a very fulfilling life. Uh, so any questions so far? Now, just take a look at This is well known quote. Here's my question. What makes one's life rich in poverty, and another life unfulfilling in abundance? Why does some people uh, live, live a happy life, fulfilled life, who have no money? And the people who are loaded with money, they're miserable. Why? So I said, the answer may be found in terms of purpose. Yeah. The effect of survival depends on it. Now, here is, now, before I talk about my study, okay, this is some study I did years ago. Now, this is a story about three contractors, you know, like my friend Shaw is there, he's a contractor. <laughs> See you there. So the three contractors uh, do the same thing, right? So they were involved in building, building a church or cathedral. So a reporter asked three guys, well, 
what, what are you doing here? I said, well, I, I lost my job, so I couldn't, I couldn't find anything better. So I'm just temporarily, you know, work as a construction guy to make some money, right? The first guy. So he's there because he wants to make a living, all right? He just, he got his job, right? He will be an engineer or whatever. He now works as a construction worker. The second guy said, well, that's my career, right? I've chosen construction, contracting as my career. I want to be a successful contractor. Right? Well, that's fine, right? He had a career in mind. The third guy said, oh, I'm so happy to be involved in this project. I'm building a temple of worship. Okay, so, so to me, it's more than just making money, more than a career, I'm involving something with a higher purpose. I'm building a temple of worship so people from all over the world can come here to worship God. So that gives me real joy. Okay. So, uh, let, let me see where we are. Now, the same thing applies to school. Years ago, while I was still a professor at Trent, I did a study on attrition. You know, like in the first year of university, attrition rate is very high. In all across Canada, attrition rate is about 40%. You know that? First year university kids drop out 40%. Uh, so my job is to find out why you drop out, right? So that's because, uh, you know, it's a waste of my time, you know, to teach them and then they drop out on the first year. So I still I did a big study, okay? I carried the study for several years. So it's basically asked them, well, what made them come to university, right? That's a simple question, right? What, what the purpose of attending university or college? So it comes down to about six major reasons for attending college. Three are bad, three are good. Yeah. <laughs> the first bad reason was I could find a job, I got nothing to do, right? Yeah. I don't know how to spend my time. I, 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 can't, I can't find a job, so, oh, my son, go to school, right? So that, that's not the number reason, right? So the second one is parental pressure. You know, Chinese parents, they always pressure the kid to go to college, right? You got to go to university, you know? Otherwise, you're afraid that you're, you're a disgrace to the family. So a lot of, a lot of parental pressure. Right? You know, kids say, oh, mom, I want to become a mechanic. I don't want to go, you know. I want to be an apprentice and I get trade. I don't go to university, all parents will be very mad. So that doesn't work. Because you give the pressure by the parents, they don't last very long, they don't work, they don't do very well. The, the third reason is that, well, all my friends are going there, you know, right? I'm going to meet boys, meet girls. So you go to the university to meet boys, meet girls. So students who, who subscribe to this reason, they're more likely to drop out, more likely to not do too well. Now, there are, there are some good reasons for attending university. The first one is, I love learning. There is, there's a goal in the you know, book. There's intrinsic value in acquiring knowledge. It's, it's satisfying. It's it really satisfying to learn something, to stimulate my mind, to stretch my intellect. You know, just study itself is rewarding. The second one is that it's instrumental. We say, well, I want to be a, a medical doctor or an engineer or, or a nurse. That's my calling. I want to, to be a professional person to do something in a better society, but you, you can't get professional without having to be education, right? So, so they have a purpose. When, it, when students have a career purpose, they tend to do better. They don't talk about it. Finally, 
I come to university so that I can develop myself as a person. Now, not just in the lab. You know, I go to John Kim clubs. I just to know who I am, to develop my social skill, my my aesthetic ability or my spiritual maturity. I mean, I just want to become a better person. Do you know? Many research shown that people who go to university tend to be more tolerant. Eh? More tolerant of other people. And also tend to have better health. Enjoy better health, better aging. So just a three or four year college education can really benefit a great deal. So here the study shows that your purpose matters. Your purpose matters. It, it, it doesn't matter whether you go to school or go to work. Now, in terms of, of job, in terms of job, again, we mentioned earlier, the attention to attitude. You can know, treat the job as what you're living. Of course, it's legitimate. I mean, everybody can make a living, right? You don't your parents are probably all your life, right? Oh, you don't want to live on welfare, right? So, so I mean, that's legitimate, right? That's legitimate. Everybody wants to make a living. Minimum requirement, you got to make a living. <laughs> that's the minimum requirement. Now, the second one is, you know, the, the story, I mean, develop some kind of career path, right? Mm -hmm. I put in my three or four careers. And people live so long now, right? Many people have three or four careers. But you, you have some kind of career path, right? So, so not just like living, but you, you're going somewhere with your work. Yeah. If, you get, if you work on a dead-end job, you will not, not be very happy. The third one is, is the black builder, build cathedral. The third one has a sense of calling. Okay. Now we're to find out what that calling means. Okay, well, I have a calling, I have a vocation. What I have in more than more than a career, more than make a good living, I have a calling. Now research has shown that if you have a calling, you tend to be happier with your work. You tend to do better with your work. You know, it's similar to study, the same thing. Now, let's find what calling is, okay? okay. Calling is defined as fulfilling a specific life role for the greater good. So there, there, are, there, are, two, there are two characteristics of calling. I mean, that one is, in, in, in the large scheme of things, in this world, there's a special role for me. Yeah? That, that, that little niche, just for me, yeah? that's my role. And that role is not just for my own benefit, but I will take up this role for the greater good. See, a calling usually implies the some, some, some an important life role assignment from God or, or from society, and also for the greater good. Now, Luther and Calvin, both are theologians, so, so they have a, an important contribution. Remember the Bible? When Adam and Eve uh, got kicked off from, from the Garden, garden of uh, Eden, you know what God said? They toil, they are day in, day out, they toil, toil with their hands, you know. So work is drudgery, it's punishment, right? Do this to obey God, so now they have to work for the rest of their life and sweat it out, no fun, no joy. But during the Reformation, Luther and then on Calvin, Luther develops theology of work. You know, Work cannot be all drudgery and bad, you know, or sweat, sweating and toiling and no, no fun. 
He said, actually, work can be a sense of calling from God. Work actually has significance, has spiritual significance. Work is, it is one way, it's an important way for us to fulfill a special mission on earth. Because now he elevate, he elevate work to higher ground now. Calvin follows the same line, saying that vocation, in which education and vocation is an important way to transform the world for God's glory. See? Again, elevate work to something like evangelistic work. You actually can transform society, can restore paradise through education and work. Nothing about that. And Weber later on wrote a favorite book called The, the Protestant Work Ethic. Now, this is saying he did a massive study compared Catholic uh, countries and Protestant, Protestant countries and other countries. And he discovered like, Western Europe and North America tend to, tend to be more prosperous, economically more prosperous, tend to progress much more faster than Catholic country or country belong to other religions. So Weber come to the conclusion is that, well, it has something to do with the religion. Right? It has something to do with the belief that material blessing or wealth is a sign of God's approval and blessing on the hard work. See? You work hard and God bless you with material wealth. So you can see that success and fulfillment and enjoyment it is importantly related to your attitude towards work. Now, nowadays, uh, my friend uh, Stagner and other people say, well, you can have a sense of calling without theological beliefs. So, in other words, there are alternative transcendental sources. You can say, well, my calling is to serve humanity. Oh, my calling is save the environment. Oh, my calling, like uh, Jack, Jack Layton, my calling is social justice and equality. I want to help all the marginalized people, the poor people, the seniors, the immigrants. I want to give them more opportunities, more benefits. So that it, it, it transcends some interest, right? So what is, what is, is based on religion? based on uh, a, a, a socialism or environmentalism, you're working on something for a higher purpose, more than just personal success. You know? And now there's a lot of research on public psychology. Now, here's another point. Now. I just have a thesis from Australia University, a, a, dissertation, a doctor dissertation. Hi, Julia. Oh, they did not, they not. I'm back in town. Uh, now, this is very interesting. <coughs> this is uh, for me, you know, I, you know, I used to do with exam, a doctoral dissertation from Australia, you know, Australian University. Now, this is an interesting thesis. Written by a man, written uh, by a man on a calling to be a parent, and parenting, like motherhood parenting. Right? So, nowadays, very few women say, my calling is to be a mom. Uh, how many women there say, my calling is to be a mom, stay home mom and, uh, and raise children? How many here? I feel like that. <laughs> I, like that. <laughs> I work full time, but I feel that's my calling. Oh, yeah. Very interesting, you know. Uh, you know, my niece, uh, she's a medical doctor, right? But she feels her calling to be a mom, mm -hmm. so she not want to work one day a week to keep up the mm -hmm. license. I'm calling her three times a day. Huh? I'm calling my mom three times a day. <laughs> so, uh, this is, uh, 
Now, motherhood, motherhood can be calling, right? Now, parenting can only be calling. So many, I don't know how many men there. Say, my calling is to be a stay at home dad. Look at the children. <laughs> Do you know men like that? Not too many, but there are men like that. Say, I'm so happy to stay at home. Cooking with my wife. Look at the children. You know, my wife is smart. She's a good money, right? And I hate work. I prefer to play with children. <laughs> <laughs> so, so do do not parenting, okay? Parenting can be called it. Definitely. <laughs> uh, can't stay home for kids. You could work. And <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't survive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, uh, my mouth so dry. Yeah, it is my mouth so dry. Yes, this. Red food. food. Red food. Now, here's an important concept, okay? The some of purpose, different type of purpose, right? Extrinsic versus intrinsic. Remember Steve Jobs said, all the intrinsic motivation, right? Money, uh, name, recognition, do all fade away when that happens, right? So external, extrinsic, is less important than intrinsic. Now, this morning, when we go to church, <coughs> I, I, you know, I spoke to children running around here. You know, children running around, up, down, down, say, quite full of articles, down, say, come down, say, they run around. Now, that way, it's something intrinsic, but they, they run around, just for fun of it. They don't run around running a race, so I'm just getting nowhere, they run back and forth, all right? <laughs> Yeah, they, they can't stay up. I mean, they, there's so much energy, right? So intrinsic, right? But they, they just enjoy doing it. They can't, they can't sit still. They can't sit still, right? So, uh, you know, they can end up experiment. You know, experiment. Experiment, experiment. Kids were drawing, you know, playing. So psychologists say, kid, will you do drawing, playing for me? I'll give you five bucks. Yeah. But you look like you're only five bucks. Sure, five bucks. Yeah. Every day the kids come here, five bucks. Then after a few days, the psychologist said, Oh, sorry, I ran out of money, no more money. Now go back to the drawing. The kids lost the interest. Now, lost the interest. Why? Extrinsic motivation undermines intrinsic motivation. Right? You become a rewarded kids for doing things. Do you lose the interest? You, you, you want to do it. Extrinsic motivation refers to the pursuit of some activity for a certain reward. Okay? Extrinsic motivated activities are a means for an end. Right? You do something in order to get something. Intrinsic activity are rewarding and satisfying in their own right. So if you find something that intrinsically satisfying, you're better off. You're better off. Yeah. Now, now, here, 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 here. Uh, here I, 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 I put on Facebook and every day I put something on Facebook, yeah, that's my idea. I said, well, there are five songs of intrinsic, extrinsic, intrinsic motivation. Love someone unconditionally. Now that's intrinsic, right? True love does not ask anything for in return. Okay? Do you agree? True love is intended for the other person's benefit, expecting nothing in return. Most parents love children. They, they are really smart and expect the kids to, to love them back when they grow up. Okay? Chinese parents get very mad with the children because they expect children to take care of them when they get old. When children cannot do that, they are very mad. So that's not intrinsic anymore. Extrinsic. I reach you so you support me when I get old. <laughs> that's extrinsic, right? 
Tell your parents that experience is no good for you. Love, yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, unconditionally, and do something you love, right? Do something you love, and learn something new, right? Learning is very rewarding, right? She's so excited about learning some, learning some high tech, right? She said, the whole thing in Apple and Sony, you know? But she's so excited about learning high tech. She should be a technician, you know, learning technology. Right? And do some kind. The lot of research show that you always feel good from doing good, right? You always feel good from doing good. To be kind to people, you feel good, right? And lastly, you ought to pursue some idea, so that makes you feel good. It'll make you feel like what's leaving. Steve Jobs said, don't settle for anything less, right? Don't you settle for anything less. Follow your heart. Pursue your dream. You might be, you know, in, in, in his days, knock down IBM. That's so remote to me, because it turned into Apple, you know, basement. He went to knock down IBM. He had, a, he had a gun to tell the whole world that I'm locked on IBM. Oh, he, he did, right? So, so don't be afraid of... And my friend, my Christian friend, C. L. Lewis, is said, getting old doesn't mean that you cannot have new dreams. I still have dreams, right? Getting old doesn't mean that you cannot have new dreams. It's dreaming, it's pursuing an idea or a dream that maybe you feel alive. Okay. Now here is an experiment. Okay. Here is a power. Okay. Let's see if I can solve it. Okay. You're giving a, a candle, a match, a box of some pack. A, a box of some pack. Your job is to fix so, fix a lit candle on the wall so the wax not drop on the table. Now, do you know how to solve the problem? How many people know? Huh? Sarah, you know the solution, right? You learn in school, right? <laughs> do you study business or psychology? Sorry? You learn in school of business or psychology? Yes, yeah, psychology. Psychology, okay. Now, do you know the tricky part? Solve the problem for nothing. Solve the problem, the faster you do, the more money you have. Right? Okay? Simple that. You got a lot of money, lot of money $10, for if you uh, solve the problem that they will see in three minutes or whatever. Or $5 within five minutes. Or the other guys, no money. Get what it is fine. Sarah, what did you find me? I think uh, it was the people that were paid money that solved it faster. Yeah. The more money you receive, the slower is the solve Now, this is another example that extrinsic motivation doesn't work in terms of high stake work. You know, problems of high stake work in terms of creativity. Money work for routine work, right? Peace work. The more money you give, the faster you do this, right? Yeah. But in terms, of, in terms of creative work, the creative work, money doesn't work. You know why? Because the idea of doing fast, getting money, actually interfere with your problem solving. Right? Your problem solving is an incubate idea, right? Even in a hurry, you, you think all that. You think outside the box. Okay? You're more likely to find a solution than get angry. Oh, I have to beat the clock. You beat the clock. I, I, I solve math problems, or, or physics problem, or any problem, or philosophical problem. The more to the faster, the slower you get. You know, you take a walk, come on, take a walk. Go out some fun and come back. And, and, and you might more likely find a solution. Right? Now, do you want to see a solution? <laughs> I got it. You got it. 
하나 내 새끼야. Um, just when you guys were talking, oh, and you yeah. said, "Do you know?" And earlier this week, my idea was really wrong, but I just got it now when you two were talking. <laughs> yeah. That right? Yeah. Is it? I think so, Shen. But if you're anxious, raise your hand to talk. You won't get it. The box. The box of the thumb tag used as a platform. Yeah. Oh. What is in the box? Yeah. The box holding the thumb tag, right? You just throw that out. What is it? The candles yeah. in the box. The thumb tags were used to put the box on the wall. See? The candles stood up in the box. Here, 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 what you have before? A box of thumb tag, right? I mean, most people don't want, most people try to Burn the side of a candle stuck to the This was my idea earlier, yeah. You know, I mean, you don't want to kind of yeah. put it off, right? It didn't work, yeah. right? And, and then put some tank on, on the table below. Uh -huh. See, that try everything doesn't work. What really works is use the, use the box as the platform for the candle. Mm -hmm. And also the so, so extrinsic. So, so intrinsic motivation is always better, but yeah, be positive. Can I ask a question? Yes. So, so what does this mean? Huh? Are you trying to say the extrin extrinsic motivation is better than the intrinsic? Yes, always. All this, I give you hundred of studies. Hundred studies. If you want to make the worker more motivated, okay, more productive, or make yourself, okay, living a more fulfilling life, more productive life, you have to focus on the intrinsic motivation. Oh, that is the hundred studies. Yeah, yeah. very, very clear. You have to do, it, do something for your intrinsic value, not just to do something to get something. I marry you so that you put me to school. Or I, 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 I do business with this guy so use him. Or you come using people. <laughs> no relationship will last if you want to use people. Right? You say, oh, I'm going to marry you because I love you. Okay? I, I want to bring happiness to you. That married you see it last. No, here's the proof, right? I, mean, I live to make her happy, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my, yeah, I, I, my purpose in life is to make her happy. <laughs> if she's unhappy, then I'm in trouble, right? <laughs> so, I mean, intrinsic motivation is, is very powerful. There are thousands of studies, quite a job or relationship. Children, yeah. The bottom line is quite, quite similar. Uh, at least five, right? Divide your skill. Oh, I, I like young people. Play piano better. Right? I improve my piano playing. Or oh, learn something new, right? Or oh, love somebody. To make them happy. Bring happiness to other people. Then the question: Are you still doubting? I might get it later. Okay. But trust me, okay, the doubts are studies now. The conclusion is in terms of motivation is better for you. Yeah. When you discover in terms of motivation, you're happier. Yeah. Now okay, here another fundamental difference. Approach was avoidance. Okay? This is, this is very important. Eh? Now, I have uh, in China the different provinces, right? Shanghai, you know Shanghai I'm Shanghai, yeah. right? I'm yeah. Shanghai. <laughs> and anyone in Khoisan? And her parents, my mother's parents in Khoisan, right? Mm -hmm. You know Khoisan people? Mm -hmm. Khoisan people, Khoisan is a small village, right? So, small village, and lots of uh, Chinese immigrants in early days from Khoisan. This is my wife, yeah, yeah. The Khoisan people, because the village is so poor, 
they come to live in. So they come to Thailand, uh, to the America, and be a coolie, or a, you know, like, uh, open laundry shop, whatever. So, now when you meet people, Shanghai and Thailand, total different mentality. Shanghai people think big, right? They're adventurous. They, they want to do it. People from Thailand tend to tend to be a, avoidance. They are afraid of trouble. They are afraid of risk. They don't play safe. They, they, they hold they hold a little job and they save money they don't spend. You know, they, they, they kill children and don't trust outside the world. <coughs> Total different mentality. Couple different. Because the background in a little village, poor, are free outside the world. Shanghai exposed to foreign country. No. Shanghai exposed to foreign influence. So people in Shanghai tend to be much bolder. So you know, when other people, there are only two type of people. One is primarily motivated by avoidance. You know, they tiptoe so like they don't want to offend. They don't. They, they are. They are free of faith. They are more motivated by avoiding failure than gaining success. Now, like, like a ring toss experiment. You know the ring toss experiment, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, test your knowledge again. <laughs> I'm sorry. For that. Now, if you are afraid, now here, here is you, you have a choice. Okay. Toss the ring into a, 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 a pack, okay? You choose the distance. Now, if you are afraid of failure, what will you do? You, you go very close. You, <laughs> you can't miss it, right? You, you, you put the ring over there. Alternatively, what do they do? They go very, very far, right? So far that nobody can get it. Yeah, so far, the student ran to get it, you know? Nobody would get it, you know? So they don't feel bad, you know? So they fail, but, but no shame, because everybody fails. Right? Now, who, who, are, the, who are the achievers? What, what would the achievers do? I mean, you, are, you have achievement, you are hiring achievement motivation. What do you do? You have high and cheap motivation. Do you go very close or very far? How will you do it? Just the right amount of distance so that you challenge yourself, but it's yeah. not. You have high cheap motivation. You are not afraid of failure. So you will stay middle way. So you have about 50% chance, 50 chance of failure, 50% chance of success. Right? You follow me? So any successful people, any such of you, that would feel, they all have to be willing to take the risk of failure. But not say hundred percent failure, I mean, that's stupid, right? Like, like, go about the way through the top of the ring, I mean, it's stupid, right? They have a reasonable chance of success, but they also expect failure along, along the way. If you are afraid of failure, you never achieve anything to life. Simple. Um, you, you, you're not, I, I, I avoid failure. If you avoid failure, you might as well stay home to nothing. Okay. So the trends is not good for you, avoid is not good for you, okay? but your trends is good, approach is good, right? Uh, next one will be, now the last one I talk about, it took an orientation now. Meaning was happiness. What do, you, what do you do with your life? Did you let and say, oh, my purpose in life is to be happy. No, my purpose in life is to make Canada a better country, right? I want to make Canada a better country. More just, more opportunity for the, for the marginalized people. More equality. So, so that, that meaning is more important than happiness, right? 
Hamasip jobs. <laughs> Keep me alive is not just fun to be happy. Keep me alive. I want to bring technology to everybody, to increase the power of communication and control, make their life better. I want to change the world with technology. I want to make high tech available to the consumer so everybody can benefit from technology. That is the mission, right? Not personal happiness. Another way, other way, he met many, many obstacles. At one point, Apple almost bankrupt. Remember? Did the bike, uh, the hybrid asked Microsoft to build them out. So, so it's a long struggle. A long struggle. So, anyone who wants to live a purposeful life, meaningful life, how to say, I want to live a meaningful life, not just to be happy, okay? But when so many happiness comes to the back door. That's what I get, right? So any question about that? Now, how do you find your, now, now how do you find your purpose in life, okay? The, the, the first point is that you have to pursue something that is consistent with your inner goodness, with ethical principles. If you, you, your dream, if your dream is to like Hitler, world domination, you know, or, or kill all the Jews. Well, that's not truly meaningful life. Because you cannot build your own meaning at the expense of other people. So you, you, you pursue, pursue how to base on some ethical principles. Okay? And uh, now the work, the second approach is look deep in your heart. That's what Sip Joe said. Look deep in your heart, you know, to see what, what your deepest longing, what is your most persistent dream. Look, look at yourself, but don't look at else outside. The, the third way is my, my objective. I mean, in career counseling, you go to career counseling, huh? they assess your interests, they assess your skill, your strength. So the my objective of program was, Give, give yourself a whole batch of tests to see where your where interest lies, right? That's another approach. The, third, the, the fourth approach is to look what opportunities and resources are there. I mean, not everybody has opportunities to go on higher education or to... So sometimes you just don't have an opportunity. Like some people in China, they're very smart people, but but they handicapped the language. Yeah. Because they could not speak fluent English, they are handicapped. They do not have the same opportunities as people who are born here with, uh, with English as a natural tongue, natural language. So they, they, they have handicapped here. They start with handicap. So you have to find something that within the constraints of opportunity and resources. And also, sometimes, as well as I, I know women, okay, who have given a career in order to look after their aging parents. Now, how many, how many women willing to do that? And Jessica, I think that's in, in, to some extent, she, she, she gave up a study for one year to look after mother, mother so. So there, there are women who are willing to sacrifice their own career to take care of their parents. So now you are sitting on conflicting demand now, right? My dream was just my love for my parents. So sometimes you have to delay your dream, delay your, 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 your pursuit for the benefit of your loved one. So this is a lot of benefit there. The last point is that, you know, uh, the famous book, Purpose Driven Life, he said, purpose in life is not about you, it's about what God expects from you, right? So, you're a Christian or an unbeliever, believer, you say, well, what does God want me to do with my life? Right? So there are different ways to, to, to discover 
your calling, your, your passion. Even if you're calling, then you feel very passionate about it, right? If there's no passion involved, most likely it's not, not your true calling. Your true calling, you pursue your true calling, you have to feel very good about it. You have to feel, feel totally committed. You, you, you have to feel totally engaged to the excitement, to the energy, to the joy, to the expectation, right? So here I'm saying that you now trying to stay, try a mission statement for yourself. Okay? My mission in life is what? Try that, okay? And it's very simple and concise and follow with some, some achievable goals, okay? So that is. Uh, and also, okay, so here's an exercise about purpose in life care. Now, this little tag is based on Luke Franco's concept of meaning and purpose. If you score less than 50, that means your life is pretty empty, okay? Uh, you just, the higher the better, right? So basically measure four points, four things. One measure a sense of ability. You have to respond to something. The second one, the, the, the lack of vacuum, existential, existential vacuum, vacuum. And the third point is how to do with uh, uh, with uh, life goals, okay. and uh, and the fourth point is having to do with uh, with lack of boredom. See, emptiness and boredom means no meaning. You you like bored. You bored is like if you in the emptiness, that means existential vacuum. If you have meaning, that means you have life goals, and you have uh, a sense of direction, a purpose, a sense of mission. So, try to complete check on yourself. I'm back.